Taking a stroll through Trondheim is definitely worth it. There's lots of old wooden buildings, old storage houses that were converted to living spaces, and there's a really nice formerly factory area now dubbed the Sunny Side, which has been transformed into a very nice cultural area full of hip restaurants, places for music, and a big modern shopping mall, but all within the beautiful architecture of the old factory buildings. The city has a rich history and very nice romantic places like this bridge. It's said if you cross it together with your lover, your love will last forever. If you want to have a drink and listen to some music and you happen to be in Baklana, uh, uh, one, one part of town, uh, don't miss on this uh, really nice uh, music cafe. It's closed now, but apparently at night it's called Antiquariated and there's lots of music and nice drinks here. So be sure to check that out. So as a musician in Trondheim, you might need some supplies. I can tell you they got almost anything you could want right near the concert hall. So we'll look for it. Also a great site to visit inside Trondheim is the uh, Rockheim Music Museum uh, in the center of Trondheim where you'll find lots of history on rock music and well on Scandinavian music in general really and where you can uh, through a lot of interactive exhibitions uh, like this red Thunderbird that I'm sitting in right now uh, control screens and get a lot of uh, history on uh, the rock music that of course came from Scandinavia originally. It's funny, in many ways Trondheim reminds me of my own hometown of Amsterdam. There seem to be students here everywhere, and the atmosphere in the city is one of exuberance and creativity, as seen in the fashion in the streets, the architecture, and the wild mix of concerts and artists that perform here throughout the year. Norway's most famous, but probably also its most infamous painter, Hegan Gullveig's paintings adorn palaces, galleries, churches and other important buildings all over the world. Members of the royal family, intellectuals, business moguls, even Chinese party leaders have their portraits done by this amazing artist. He happened to be in town at the time of our visit and through a mutual friend he was kind enough to invite us over to his Trondheim studio and give us a personal tour of his amazing workspace. Falcon Tower, and here is some of the sketches from Church thing right there. Jordan. Wow. Some of the sketches. Uh, yeah. Sorry, this was the? This is the sketches for my portraits. Yes. Uh, I do most of the portraits in, in, in Oslo, but I do also some of them here. So. Uh -huh. The building is truly a sea of paintings and sketches of his works. And we talk at length about his inspirations, his works, the political storms he found himself in at various points in his life, and the responsibility of artists to sometimes make a stand for the people. As for example, Hagen and a colleague once illegally painted the walls of a set of public houses that were about to be torn down, instantly transforming them into monuments and thus halting the demolition. This is 
mostly for this. This is Gas, uh, who is the, the principal headmaster of the University of Oslo. Wow. The first uh, lady to be. It's amazing to see a studio like this. The building has over 20 rooms, including a sunroom, night room, blue sky room, yellow room, and many others, each transforming the way we experience the paintings and helping Hagan to perfect his works by taking them through each of the room stages and working on their details. After having spent some quality time discussing some of the big questions with this amazing modern master, it was time again to head back to the festival area and the music. Thank <laughs> you. 